Welcome to the Ports Garrison. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. Greetings and welcome to the Ports Garrison. I'm your host, Phil the Port, and today I want to talk to you about an issue I see going on in Jamaica with regards to the Integrity Commission. The government is up in arms about a ruling and general rulings and seems what they say is a trend of the integrity commission now integrity integrity is the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles and moral uprightness while anyone who claims to be honorable has an issue with showing their hands and saying look my hands are clean and i am honorable i have integrity now, the purpose of the Integrity Commission is to combat corruption through the development, implementation, and enforcement of anti-corruption legislation, policies, and initiatives. Recently, we saw that Jamaica was slipping down the ranking of the corrupt nations in the world. Um, the government has claimed in their defense that they were the ones who created this commission. Um, and I think the issue they're having now stems from the fact that former Minister of National Security, Peter Bunting, was basically exonerated from a uh, previous report of the commission. They issued an addendum basically clearing him for some things that they had said before. And we saw where the former, another former Minister of National Security and Chairman of the GLP, Bobby Montague, was up in arms because he was mentioned as well in a, in a report and he wasn't exonerated. So he's pointing to the bias or to bias in the commission's rulings because they went back to do some research and to clear the name of Bunting. Now, <laughs> I, I find it interesting because I remember earlier this year, I think, the prime minister was referred to an anti corruption, director of corruption prosecution by the said integrity commission for his alleged role in some conflicts of interest in some awarding of some contracts, millions of dollars in, in government contracts to business, to companies of business associates. Um, and that was later on thrown out. They said there was nothing for him to answer. And the government was not up in arms against the commission then. They were rather excited about the ruling. Now, <laughs> I've seen where the opposition leader, Mark Golden, has come out strongly, the, the matter how much they hold and all of that. He sent a strong signal to the government that he would not support any move to curtail the powers of the anti-corruption body because we've heard some of the, the government ministers asking for their prosecutorial powers to be removed. So you want to basically make them bark but can't bite. So you give them, take out them teeth basically. What's the point? In just investigating and you can't do anything else about it. You should be able to move forward if you find something has been is wrong. Now, there's a listing of government members who are up against the the integrity commission. I uh, then did say before about Montague as his, his personal issue. The James Robertson, James Robertson, hmm, haven't seen him in Parliament in a long time. He has his issues with the integrity commission. Well, James, James, hmm. Interesting. Marlene Mallow Fort. She also has issues against the Integrity Commission. Delroy Chuck, current Minister of Justice. The Minister of Information, Robert Nesta Morgan, also has is um and Everett Warmington also wants their prosecutorial powers to be taken away from them. You see, we got to remember. That this is the Integrity Commission, the same one, with the Prime Minister Declaration of Assets and Liability has still not been verified. So there are still issues. And if your hands are clean, as I said before, you have to hold them up to any form of scrutiny, pass any test to say, look, I'm honorable and I'm clean. And I've seen snippets of, of the, the, the discussion and discourse going around. I don't want you to look at a snippet. I want you to watch the entire presentation, the entire discourse in the, in the Parliament. Uh, it's pretty lengthy, maybe it's over nearly 40 minutes, but watch it because you have to see everything so you can come to your own conclusion, right? And once again, I see where the Speaker of the House is getting involved in the debates. 
which is technically shouldn't because as a referee, you can't chip up a player and you can't seek to take a free kick. But anyway, that being said, let me let you go look at the video and please share your comments on what you heard from both sides um, at the end of the video in the comment section. And once again, I thank you for watching. And as always, take care of yourself. It's one love and enough respects. Blessings. It's a matter of national importance yes. as it concerns the Integrity Commission and whether it carries out its in investigative functions in a manner that is fair, impartial, and thorough. This is relevant to every civil servant, every teacher, every policeman or army officer, every public servant, yes. every Jamaican who falls under the Integrity Commission Act. Yes. Last year, Madam Speaker, the Integrity Commission tabled a report after a review of the Firearm Licensing Authority between 2012 and 2018. This report was laid in March last year in this Honorable House. At that time, Madam Speaker, I indicated that the report was incomplete. The passage of time has proven me correct. If it was complete then, why was it necessary for the Integrity Commission now to lay an addendum to the report after one year? And and only review a part of the period it reported on originally. Significantly, Madam Speaker, the report then, in its recommendations, did not ask for any action to be taken against me in the discharge of my duty as a Minister of National Security. None. No recommendation was made against me, no referral to any institution for further action. None whatsoever, Madam Speaker, none. Why was that? Because I did nothing wrong and I broke no law. I, as minister, exercised my discretion in good faith and I acted at all times in accordance with the law and the duties cast on me as minister under the legislation. This would explain why no recommendation was made against me and there was no referral to any institution for further action. Madam Speaker, in April, 2022, I made a public statement which was carried in both nationally circulated Sunday papers. The Integrity Commission would have seen or read that public statement. There was a deafening silence then. Mm. There was no review of the report then. Mm. But another public statement is made and the Commission tables an addendum. What? It's like there is one rule for some and another a week on Madam Speaker, this demonstrates bias, yes. Yes. malice, and prejudice. Absolutely. Yes, yes. This demonstrates that the in investigative process of the Integrity Commission is unfair or biased and shows a lack of even handedness as they act differently in certain circumstances, depending on which person is being investigated. They have no credibility. No credibility. Madam Speaker, the addendum is basically a review of the original report. So tell me, how can a judge, having passed a sentence, turn around one year later and add to his verdict what? a judge of the same level yes. madam speaker that's manifestly unfair <laughs> furthermore they did not review the whole period but only a section and then slammed the door shut stating in the addendum that they will not disturb the rest of the report what <laughs> What? Madam Speaker, no new information 
was sought or given. My quick read shows that they made the decision on information already in their possession. I, I, Madam Speaker, provided information to them in my public statement, but I was not good enough to merit a review. This is clearly prejudice, bias, and malice. Madam Speaker, this treatment can happen to a teacher, yes. a policeman, yes. a member of the JDF, a civil servant, a permanent secretary, every member of this house. Where is the equity, the fairness, and the accountability? Madam Speaker, as a member of this honorable house that feels aggrieved, I am asking for the Oversight Committee of Parliament that oversees the Integrity Commission to be convened to review and consider whether the Integrity Commission acted fairly and in a principled manner. The review should not be confined to my case only, but it should cover generally how the Integrity Commission carries out its investigative actions, Absolutely. its administrative processes, and whether it is fair and impartial in the execution of the duties in this area. Yes. Further, I am asking that the Joint Select Committee reviewing the Integrity Commission Act be asked to consider amending the legislation to give the ordinary citizen, the ordinary Jamaican, the policeman or woman, the army officer, the civil servant, the permanent secretary, and the teacher, a mechanism of review and to remove the bar against taking the commission and its officers to court to seek redress. Yes. Madam Speaker, every Jamaican is entitled to preserve their good name and Absolutely. reputation. Greater care must be taken as to how we destroy that. If the ordinary civil servant or nurse cannot obtain a big law firm and consultants, mm. we deny them the right to a good name? No, 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 Madam Speaker. That cannot be right. A way, Madam Speaker, must be found to have effective oversight of the Integrity Commission to make sure that they carry out their work in a manner that is fair, yes. but at the same time ensuring that any oversight does not interfere with their independence so long as they carry out their statutory duties in a fair manner. Justice, Madam Speaker, must not only be done, it must also appear to be done. Absolutely. Madam Speaker, our system of justice guarantees your innocence until you are proven guilty in a court of law. The Integrity Commission is a commission of parliament. Therefore, it must act honorably, fairly, and justly as it wields awesome powers which can adversely affect the reputation of persons who are investigated by it. Yes. Ordinary Jamaicans, who fall under the preview of the Act must have an accessible means to vindicate their reputation when they have been treated unfairly by the Commission. An opportunity under the law must be given to the ordinary citizen for the right for their opinions to be heard. Yes. Madam Speaker, a report should be sent to the affected party and their comments should form a part of the final report to be laid in Parliament. That, Madam Speaker, That's is right. basic justice, which is the right to be heard. That's right. Madam Speaker, the convening of the Oversight Committee to review the original report to see if the principles of equality, openness, and fairness were applied. And I base my request for the convening on the following. One. The addendum is altered by a different official 
than who did the original report what? without any new information. Two, the addendum or appeal is done by an official of the same standing or level. Paul, Madam Speaker, cannot review Paul. That is unprincipled, unfair, and borders on victimization. This is a clear conflict and violation of natural justice. The addendum is a report that is over one year old without reviewing the whole report is biased, prejudicial, and unfair. Madam Speaker, at what point or time does the Integrity Commission close its offer report? Hmm. Will they come next year with another addendum? Yes. Or in five years' time? Madam Speaker, as the head of this branch of the government, the legislative, legislature, may I ask you to write to the Attorney General's chambers to seek their opinion on whether the Integrity Commission can reopen or add an addendum to a report that has already been laid, and if the process is, is correct and proper, without new information. So, Madam Speaker, I am urging you yes. to consult with the Attorney General. Madam Speaker, we need this review to restore the confidence of every government worker, every teacher, every nurse, every police and army officer, every Jamaican and public servant who fall under the preview of this act, so that we may have their hope restored and their confidence gained in the commission. And that whether you are rich or poor, from uptown or downtown, yes. town or country, there is one rule, one law, one Jamaica. Madam Speaker, I thank you for the time and the indulgence. Thank you. Um, um, members, I have noted the um, uh, what the um, the contribution of the member, and in keeping, and I also noted that there were on both sides of the aisle. All our members of parliament were clapping in agreement. And, well, not all, with the exception of two. The, with the exception of two members. All members of this house, because I'm sitting here and looking, and I have been requested by the leader of the opposition to speak and so I have noted that the members on both sides have been in agreement and in keeping with the standing orders because this is a motion on adjournment. I'm looking at 11-4. Uh, I am Madam allowing Siegel, I, I withdraw. I withdraw that request. He doesn't wish to speak anymore. Okay. Well, I am in keeping. In keeping, he has a right to withdraw. Um, in keeping with the standing orders, 11-4, I will allow three members, and I see two hands, I was giving the leader first, three members, and you're allowed to speak on this motion for no more than three minutes. So I'll ask... Madam Speaker, thank you very much for allowing me to stand in support of my colleague because I'm not spoiling it. What about you, man? Oh, you're so miserable. Just three minutes in front of the waste time. That's right, man. Now, the reason, the reason I think I need to speak, Madam Speaker, is that in supporting my colleague, I realize that we have seen a trend in behavior.
and I refer specifically to a press release that was issued by the Integrity Commission on June 6, where the Commission made allegations that I, statements I made could mislead the public. I think it is important, Madam Speaker, that while not going into the depth of the issue, the approach by the Integrity Commission in that press release against me does not associate itself with how we believe that an independent entity such as the Commission should behave. The facts, Madam Speaker, is that I was asked a question about a code of conduct that was being requested by the Integrity Commission to be signed in uh, April uh, uh, by a journalist. Point of order, Madam Speaker. With the greatest of, of, of respect, the member from Central St. Mary, Western St. Mary, got a special approval from you to speak on a matter affecting him. affecting him. So unless it is that matter, I don't think it's appropriate for, for a new matter to be introduced at this time. Right. So, Madam Speaker, I want to say that what I refer to is a trend that is associated with the unfairness that the member has spoken about. And I was articulating another example to support that what he's saying is not an individual incident, but a trend. And if I can support him by identifying a trend, I do not see anything inappropriate with that. And I was pointing out, Madam Speaker, that his incident is a part of a continuing act where certain behaviors by the Integrity Commission demonstrate that they are not meant. So while my colleague may try to stand up and say whatever he wants to say, I think it's appropriate that I raise the point. And I appreciate your intervention. Madam Speaker, the point I was making is that the Integrity Commission has been in public speaking about which cabinet minister has not signed a code of conduct. Yet, no cabinet minister other than the prime minister has been furnished with such a code by the Integrity Commission. In their letter, they have said that they will continue to release the names of those who have not signed without even consulting us as to what is in the code, what are our rights and responsibilities based on the code. And Madam Speaker, I think it's a continuing approach by the Commission where it disregards the rights and due process and fairness associated with persons that they are interacting with. And it's why I have to stand up, Madam Speaker, and support my colleague in his statement. Thank you very much. Of the opposition, are you now exercising because I gave? Yes. Uh, would you like to wait until after the member? It's okay? Good. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, <clears throat> Madam Speaker, the member for Western St. Mary on the motion for adjournment raised a matter which has impacted him, him personally. It was in the nature of a personal statement, which normally persons don't respond to um, in the procedure. But given the way it has unfolded as being on the motion for adjournment rather than under the provision for giving a personal statement, I just wanted to say a, a couple of things. First of all, this addendum addresses an objection to the content of the report insofar as it, in a misleading way, omitted evidence that was given to the Commission. And they have chosen to issue an addendum to respond to that. And as it happens, they agree with that criticism and they have corrected it in relation to the matters raised by that person. In relation to the rest of the report, which largely affects the member for Western St. Mary in his then capacity as minister, the addendum says the, 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 the director of investigations sees no reason at this time to disturb the remainder of the report of the former inter interim director of investigations. The report had been done by a predecessor. So what I read that as saying is that based on the material that they have seen or heard, they don't see any reason to change their ruling on those matters. It is for the member to raise those issues with, with them in a convincing way. 
if he feels aggrieved, as was done by the person who they have responded to here. So I hope he will avail himself of that opportunity. I know that he's seeking an opinion from the Attorney General's chambers via your office as to whether when a report is tabled here, that means that the jurisdiction of the commission comes to an end in relation to whether they can issue an addendum or not. And we will await the Attorney General's ruling on that. I would just say generally, though, there's a trend I'm seeing from that side to attack the Integrity Commission. There have been attempts to... There have been clear attempts... Members, uh, members, members, I am allowing every member of this house who gets permission to stand and speak to speak. I have already indicated to this house and to the public that as the speaker sitting here, when the member from St. Mary got up to speak, I carefully noted that every member of this house on this side and on that side, barring three persons, were shaking and hitting their desks in agreement. It is the right of the leader of the opposition to state a point differently from wh or whatever his views are. But the public, but the public, and I have said, the public will take note that members of this house on both sides, but he's entitled to his own view. So you have three minutes, use it wisely, you're gone somewhere. I, I will endeavor to do so, Madam Speaker. I said and I maintained that I've noticed a trend for the government members in parliament through the oversight committee or the committee that's reviewing the integrity commission to seek to dismantle its powers in some ways that would I think neuter it and make it ineffective. I caution against that. I think the Integrity Commission needs to be nurtured as a young institution and supported so it can fulfill its mandate of trying to eradicate corruption in this country, which is one of the most serious problems this country faces. And, and I think it's very important that Parliament not send a signal that would be interpreted by the wider public as suggesting that we are at odds with that motive. Now, insofar as fairness to individuals is concerned, I think it's important that individuals be treated with fairly. And where the Integrity Commission transgresses in that regard, I expect them to correct that in an appropriate manner, as they have done with this addendum. To the extent that the member for St. Mary Western feels he has not been treated fairly, I expect him to put the material before the Commission, which would put them in a position to adjudicate that matter, and they can respond accordingly. But it is important that the Integrity Commission see fairness as part of what is their mandate. On the other hand, um, yeah, go ahead, on the other hand, anything to do with reducing their powers, curtailing the scope of their investigatory mandate, their prosecutorial mandate, will not have my support. I am very much in favor. Um, I am very much in favor of that institution being empowered to do its work because corruption is a problem in the country. We have seen a lot of it over the last several years. Remember, we are speaking to this point. Here. Indeed. Just, and you've made it. And as, yeah. as for the leadership code of conduct, I was sent it. I signed it. I, I encourage the Integrity Commission to allow the, the members of the Shadow Cabinet to also sign it. They said that they don't have a problem with that, and most have signed it. Thank you. And I, I don't see why the other side is resisting. Madam Speaker, I am um, not allowing you to go. I am holding to the fact of the main point that was raised by the Very opposition. Well, thing. But it was raised really Madam Speaker, on a point of order. Madam Speaker, on a point of order. No, no, wait. Has wait. responsibility for information matters. Have a seat there, Mr. Goldman. So, 
That is why I felt I, I have a you. right to respond to that. I and thank that is what I have done. No, no. Your, your opposition business person stated correctly we are dealing with that addendum and I appreciate your point of view and I've allowed it. Well, thank you. Thank and you. and so, your three minutes. Yeah, so I would just say to the member for St. Mary Weston, if you feel aggrieved about the report, put the material, point to the commission to where the specific issues are and expect them to treat you fairly. Okay. And I would support you being treated, anyone in here being treated fairly. What I will not support is any attempt to undermine the legitimacy of the Integrity Commission, um, any attempt to undermine their powers or their mandate. I think it's very important that we avoid doing that. And that, no matter how much you want to howl, it's not going to affect me. You, know. you can, I will say what I have to say as long as the Speaker authorizes me to do so. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam, Madam Speaker. I, I, I allowed you on the basis that we are dealing with a particular fact. You are the first person who asked for permission. I gave you the permission. You said you didn't want it. You have used it. And in fact, you have gone over and above what it is we have agreed to. But may I, as a speaker of this house, when you talk about the government side trying to um, minimize or whatever it is with the integrity commission may i remind this house and this country that it is this government that passed the integrity act and hold on hold on hold on a minute and may i remind this this country and this parliament that it is this government that it is this government in its anxiety to ensure that we curtail and hold corruption in hand that has created this act because we went overboard as a government to give the integrity powers and in addition hold on and in addition to that if you look through your budget i, I allowed your leader to speak and i'm now speaking and in addition to the budget this government has given this government has supported financially all the requests necessary to make the commission effective. Madam, no, Madam no. Speaker, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, you know, the, the last speaker, Mr. Golden, the, Madam I Speaker. I am merely stating a fact. I am stating a fact. I am sitting here. Members, just a minute. Members, will you please? Um, members, I ask you, a, mo some, a, a matter was raised on the motion, and the leader of the opposition asked to speak. He went overboard, but he has a right, as I said, to his opinions. Now, having said something, I am merely indicating in his overreach, in the overreach as to the opinion, that he mentioned this side of the aisle and I'm saying that this is a government that instituted the Integrity Commission, has financed it and will continue to support it within the ambit of the law. Uh, uh, no, no, no. A member from South St. Andrew was very warm in, and fulsome in his support of my position for justice, fairness and equality. And I thank him very much for those. But however, Madam, to continue on the same trend, a quick read of the report. He has advised me as an eminent attorney at law, and I will take his advice, that I should write to the Integrity Commission. The addendum clearly says that the other persons did not write. They made a public statement on the 3rd of May, 2023. 
And Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I made a public statement. I made a public statement in April 2022. So in other words, Madam Speaker, there is one rule, one rule over here, and one rule over here. So all I am, Madam Speaker, all I am asking for, all I am asking for is equity, justice, and fearness. I am not, I have clearly said, Madam Speaker, in my statement, that any oversight of the commission should not interfere in their independence. I have not sought to undermine the valuable work that the Integrity Commission was set up to do. No, I no, want no. that to be very no, clear. No, no. You never said that. It never said It's not a motion for debate. Madam Speaker. A, a, a point of I, order. No, point of order, Madam Speaker. The rules of debate clearly state that if the member who raised the motion, having spoken on it, and be given a second time to speak effectively closes. No, no, he's not closing anything. Yes, he can. It's a motion. He, he can only no, speak no, twice. with due respect. He can only speak. I was on a point of order. He spoke. A, a point. <laughs> what point? What was the point of order? The please. point of order was what the member said, Madam Speaker. I, I, I intend to exercise my three minutes. First of all, Madam Speaker. The matter of corruption is a major problem for this country. This parliament needs to be united in terms of remo removing corruption from our country. And where we have a commission that is supposed to act to ensure that corruption is identified and removed, it should get our support, yes. But we cannot in a situation where it appears that the commission is not acting fairly and equitably. The commission is not beyond criticism and where the commission takes a position that members on the government side have not signed. Not one member over here have seen this code of conduct this political code of conduct. I have not seen it, and now, Madam Speaker, I don't know. So I'm told, so I am told. I certainly have not seen it. I have checked with several members, they have not seen it. And to say in a press release yesterday, Madam Speaker, that those of us who have not signed it, something we have not seen, that we will be acting as if we are against what is in it. My God, how can they say that? And Madam Speaker, with due respect, the commission has demonstrated a certain bias, yes. a certain unfairness, yes. which demonstrates that this integrity commission lacks integrity. Yes. And with due respect, Madam Speaker, you can give repeated instances. In January of this year, they sent a report on Petrodram, where the Director of Corruption Proceedings, in the letter signed by Greg Christie, that rule that no action will be taken against anyone. They released a report on the Prime Minister, and when it was two days later, said the Director of Corruption proceedings will not, did not find anything to proceed. And when it was said, why didn't you send that at the same time? It could not be sent at the same time. But when you look at the Petrodram report, it was sent at the same time, January the 6th. And you ask the question, why was in relation to the Petrodram report, you had that ruling in the tabling of the report, but when it comes to the tabling of the Prime Minister, the Westcon report in which the Prime Minister was referred to the Director of Cor Corruption Proceedings, who ruled three months before 
that there was nothing to prosecute. It was not tabled at the same time. What caused the Integrity Commission not to publish it at the same time, just like the Petrodrum report? And I ask Ms. Madam Chairman, sorry, Ma Ma Madam Speaker, the Integrity Commission needs to get its act together. It is clearly acting in a manner which has been perceived by the people of Jamaica as not being fair. And the sooner it gets its act together, the better for Jamaica. And if it can't get its act together, it is time for them to take action in the interest of the Jamaican people because the people of Jamaica and this parliament, certainly on this side of government, don't have trust and confidence in this report. When it can publish a report and a year later revise it and at the same time not comp comprehensively revise it, what is happening, Madam Speaker? What is happening? What is the equity in revising a report when you do it for a member, but not another member? Madam Speaker, the Integrity Commission needs. Thanks for watching.